That's the theme music. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Joyous Monday to you. It's arrived St. Patty's Day, I see. You went yes. a drunken lot, were you? <laughs> Drinking green <laughs> beer. When I drank beer, the last color I wanted beer to be would, would be green. Green, because it's going to come up green. <laughs> when you see it again, it's going to be really bad. <laughs> That's why you don't have them grasshoppers. You know them drinks called grasshoppers because they're green? Yeah, because when you see them again, it's a bad deal. Yeah, green beer. Oh. Well, our river was green as well. Yes, yes. The, the mayor um, has gotten this from Chicago. They painted the river green. Um, <laughs> I don't know why people like that. I don't understand. But a lot of people were downtown watching the um, the river get painted green and skiing on it and swimming in it. And and why you would swim in that river down there, I don't have any idea. Uh, is that Sherry? I can't read that. Sherry. Sherry, good morning, no, good Sherry. Good morning, Sherry. Happy Monday to you. Woohoo! <laughs> Hope you have a great a great week planned. We do. <laughs> Lots of coffee. That's what is where we're starting. <laughs> and this is not decaf. This is this is let it. We love coffee in this family. Yeah, we're a coffee family, so what? <laughs> well, um, they used to say coffee make you black. Remember that? Yes, they did. <laughs> the, uh, that was something our parents told us. Coffee so make you we black. Didn't drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> and we said, "No, y'all made us black <laughs> <laughs> by being our parents." Yeah, yeah, exactly. And making us go outside when you got tired of us, <laughs> y'all made us black. <laughs> yeah, we played outside a lot in Florida. Um, because that was what kids did. They Go played outside. outside. You sitting outside with nothing to do. Outside. <laughs> Getting black. <laughs> Crazy. All right, so we're going to talk about the... I'm sorry. Y'all well, don't to watch that. Um, we're going to talk today about loving through anger. Um, getting angry with your spouse is a natural uh, is a natural process through marriage. And it's good to know that um, anger is love. It's a, it's a way of loving yourself. It's a way of loving your spouse. And sometimes things have to be said and done that aren't so squeaky clean. And yes, after 30 plus years, we do argue and fight. Um, kind of. Kind of. It's gotten a lot more mild Come the on. older we get. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fine. <laughs> I do get my way a lot more. <laughs> it's these gray hairs. I'm tired. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm going to get a cup of coffee and take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot easier once you know each other better and you're more comfortable with each other and 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 saying a few things that don't really hurt anymore, but um, in early in your marriage, it can it can be bad to talk really bad to somebody that you, you know, you don't know them as well as Willie and I know each other for what thirty two plus years, thirty three years, something like that. Mm -hmm. So more than a quarter century. <laughs> So we we know things that trigger that person. So you don't say the really ugly things anymore, you know. And if they do slip out, they do. I do my best to make sure they never slip out. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, he guys, does very well guys, like just, guys, don't. Because you will not get a pass. I'm telling you, you will not get a pass. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> do yourself a favor and erase them from your brain because you will not get a pass will not work out uh, but even in <clears throat> even in being frustrated and angry well you have to always and i know i sound like a sound like a sound like a sound like a broken record um is to make sure that whatever it is isn't more important than the relationship now it's now it's it's, it's anger about a thing or a situation um that that may only last a bit of time um, or maybe a singular issue, but is that issue more important in a relationship now? As you and as you're growing, you're married one, two, three, four, five years. Um, kids, oh, that's sweet. You're married four years. That's so sweet. Um, 
everything is more tenuous because you cut quite frankly you have not built the foundation of a relationship for an extended period of time so everything is more tenuous everything's a little bit more delicate so you have to be a lot more careful depending on the on the condition of your foundation um so you, you have to you have to make a decision um how you're going to approach this if it's even worth approaching because is it going to be too heavy for the foundation that you've built currently and if it and, and if it's going to be too heavy for the foundation that you've built currently and the relationship is the most important thing then maybe you don't maybe you don't or maybe or, or maybe you're a lot more careful or you are you're super duper careful on how you approach it because if you because i mean if you submarine i mean the worst thing i've ever seen is people who submarine their own relationships who who crap can their own relationships because they're mad about this and they're and they're going to get their way and they're going to win and guys guys we never win if you crap if you crap on your relationship i promise you you will never win um science and, and a lot of you, you people are into science now science um says that if married people live longer married guys live longer we you have live long that and then we have somebody else to worry about you see so we are less likely to do stupid crap we're less likely to say stupid crap to people who can beat the crap out of us and kill you and kill me so <laughs> we're just a lot more careful um so we tend to live longer so be really careful about this this is this is very delicate stuff now because you want to be able to communicate obviously you want to be able to share you want to be able to share your frustrations as well as your victories with your spouse you have to be really careful uh, because people's feelings are still involved you know and and just because i'm a guy and we've been married 30 years we've known each other for 33 34 years or whatever however long it's been um <clears throat> it doesn't mean that I still can't get my feelings hurt. I can't, I still can't, you know, that I'm impervious. I'm not, I'm not wearing an Iron Man suit. This is red, but it's only a shirt. Um, I'm not wearing an Iron Man suit. Um, and there are, and, and even now there are things that we're still working on in our, exactly. in, in our personalities and in our lives. You, you know, even at my, even at my Ram stage, uh, we're still working on stuff. So, um, so you gotta be, so you have to be really, really careful. This I'm just saying, just saying, be really careful. And that was actually my first point is what do you say to your spouse when you're angry? Because what you say to them can, like he's saying, it, you know, you think men are, are strong and they don't, we can take you know, they can take anything. And I have been guilty of that. I, you know, in the, in the earlier years, I would say things that, you know, because, because I'm a very, um, what, how do I want to say? Dramatic. <laughs> I should have been an actress. <laughs> I can be very dramatic and I take things to the extreme and I come up with all these stories in my head as to what has happened and, and all this stuff. And then I start burping all that stuff out. And uh, sometimes you things are, are meant to stay in your head. Sometimes things are not supposed to come out. Just because you think of it doesn't mean that you're supposed to verbalize it. So be cautious of what you say to your spouse because um, you can damage them and, and, and beat down their spirit to a point to where, you know, you, you're hurting them instead of helping because you think you're saying stuff that's there that's going to help them to improve or make them a better husband or make them a better man when it doesn't help what you're saying is stuff that you're just angry about um it's a, it, i mean it, 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 it's really important and, and 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 this is not about being a beta male this is not being about about a whim this is this is real talk <clears throat> because people can I see and talk to husbands all the time that are kind of beat down. Their life hasn't worked out like they thought it would either. Mm -hmm. Their career hasn't worked out like they thought it would. They don't make as much money as they thought they would at this point. Um, they're still worrying about, I mean, they're still worrying about things they thought they'd never have to worry about at this age. You know, um, I, I, I have a good friend that I work with, <clears throat> good guy, 
um, really works hard, has a good kid, you know, does all, been doing all the right things for, uh, for, for 30 plus years. And they just went through a foreclosure. He's my age. I understand how much that sucks. I understand how horrible that is. And I don't understand how much that weighs, how, how much that weighs on him. I get it. I get it. So everybody, so, so not everybody is where they're supposed to be. And I think the worst thing that could that could possibly happen is that <clears throat> he has a way that he has a, he has to carry all of that by himself. Um, I mean, obviously he's, he, I mean, the, the, the guy has actually two gigs. He works as a, as a teacher and he works, um, at, he, he teaches privately. <clears throat> he does adjudication. I mean, he works his ass off. It's just where he is right now in his life and it sucks. Um, so don't think that, you know, ladies, please don't think that we are impervious to hurt. And that makes us weak necessarily because that's part of our charm. It's part of why you married them. You love it. Well, well, because we're not just these big thundering, cook food, cook food, erg want food. You know that's you know that that that's not who you married. That's not who you want. Uh, you want a person who has some feelings and sensibilities, and hurts a little bit sometimes about about stuff. So, um, just the, the the idea is, is that if you're going to um, if you're going to talk to your spouse, just just be mindful that you're talking to a person. <laughs> you're not talking to a thing. You're not talking to your husband. You're talking to a human being. Yes. Who hears you? <laughs> now, your husband may not react. Your spouse may not react, especially in the way that you think they should react right away. Um, they may be quiet and they're sitting and you're thinking, well, aren't you going to say something? Aren't you going to do something? Why are you just sitting? You <laughs> Do something, you know, and we, we women want, are emotional. And we want, want, <laughs> we what, want what to see want action. To, what do you want me to do? I want you to it's, express something or do something and it, it's not always their way of, of being. They, they weren't created that way. Mm, no. There are some men that are drama queens <laughs> that can carry on, you know, be the same way. But more than likely, that's not who you marry. That's not who you want. Mm -hmm. that, that's not who you want because that, that, <clears throat> that flame burns awfully hot and it burns awfully fast. And you're going to crash the both <laughs> of you together. God had this thing figured out. He wants you to be different because, you know, the whole thing about the rib, you know, we are, we came from, we, we, we're one of their ribs. So what we have was taken out of them. So I don't, <clears throat> so <clears throat> although I do have feelings, I, I, I may not have the, um, the, the white hot emotions that come out in those in those situations, <clears throat> and unfortunately, sometimes when that happens, it, fr it 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 will. And guys, no, it'll frustrate your spouse. It'll frustrate your girlfriend because you're not, <clears throat> you don't seem to be as involved. And sometimes they take it as well. You apparently you don't care. Apparently, you don't care about this as much as I do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's come from my mouth. And then you say this because we all say this. I didn't say that. I didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was listening to what you were saying. And because generally speaking, guys are a little bit more methodical. Um, not always, but a little bit more methodical. And we like to think things like to think things out before we act as opposed to just acting out of out of emotion. And the other side of this, ladies, please, sometimes we just don't know what the hell to do. Most guys won't admit that. Sometimes I don't, you know, it's like, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. I see what's happening. I don't have any earthly idea what to do. I don't know. Right now, I don't have an idea. Right now, I don't have a solution for you. Right now, I don't have an answer for your question. I don't have an answer for your question. Which is why sometimes, you know, um, you know, we always hear about don't go to bed angry or don't go to bed without solving a a an argument or something. But uh, quite honestly, sometimes you have to sleep on it. Definitely I mean, go. you don't go to bed 
completely in anger and hating this, hating your spouse. But sometimes you have to put that issue on the back burner and we need to revisit this maybe tomorrow, maybe two days from now. When you, when he has had time to think it over, when you have had time to think over the fact that you're not perfect. Oops, I'm not perfect. What? And, and, and it, and it can clear up some things, you know, I know it, it's some people always say, don't go to bed angry with your husband. You know, what if something happens? Some, people, number to, some people won't sleep for weeks. <laughs> you Really? Because you can't solve that whole thing in that one day. You just can't. And it's so emotionally draining sometimes, depending on how deep the argument is and, and how, how attached to it you you are and especially for women but how long you've carried this because a lot of times we carry things you know and we just put it in our little back pocket and you know i'm gonna bring that up later you know <laughs> and then you get another thing happening you know i'm bring that up later so so a lot of times the guy go I don't, I don't even remember what you're talking about i don't have any idea what you're talking about i just don't i don't, I don't. remember that this is 19 you remember 1987 it was tuesday I don't have any idea what you're talking about. I don't. I don't know. I don't and remember. you did this, and okay. that bothered me. And we need to deal we, with that. And we've all, and you've always done that. Try not to use phrases like "never" and "always," because, frankly, that's not true. That's not true. It seems like always when it's when it's happening now, or even if it's happening again, but it's not. It's not always. And it's not never because it just seems like never because it's happening right now or it's happened again or it's not happened again. Um, because that makes it impossible, frankly, for you to have any sort of real discussion about changing a behavior or, or finding a solution to a problem when you're, when you're at the extremes of always and never. Those are, those are so far to the extreme it's almost impossible to find any middle ground. It's almost impossible for anybody to recover from um, either position. When you say, you never. It's not true. Well, of course, really, that's not true. This is something you say to be mean to somebody. This is what you always do. No, and this is not what you always do. You didn't say that to be mean to somebody. And and this isn't just a a, a a a a female thing. Guys do it too. Um, so in your discussions, uh, your deep discussions, or your fights, or whatever, whatever you're going to use to um, to call these things, try to avoid phrases like "always" and "never" because that's that's not true. Because first of all, you're not dealing in in, in truth, and that it's makes it impossible for anybody to do anything about. The situation it makes it impossible for anybody to try to make you happy at that point, because if you never do something, that means that no matter how often you do it in the next five minutes, it'll still be never. <laughs> it'll still be never. You're like, yes. I've been doing this thing for you for about eight hours, and like, you never. Oh, that's Sorry. that's our alarm that says time to do this. No. Um, <laughs> good thing we're on it. All right, who we got? We got, Hi, we got Sharon and Terry. Sharon and Terry. Hey, y'all. Happy Monday. Um, so, again, just be really, really careful. Uh, treat your relationship like crystal. Like it's very fragile. And it's very valuable. Yes. If you, because if you, if you do that, you can, I almost can guarantee you is that it'll last because you, you've taken care of it. You've protected it. You've you've not treated you've not treated it like it didn't matter. You I mean you you were you cleaned it you washed it you you put it away in a safe space. Um, you've kept other people away from it um, because other people don't care about your relationship and they just think it's I think it's yes. funny. And that's a major thing when you have an argument with your spouse and, and it's between the two of you. Don't bring your mama Keep and your sister you. and all these people into that argument and you remember when he did blah 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 and you know he never do that so you know i knew there was something wrong with him when you brought him here the first time. yeah don't bring family members into what you the two of you have because that's just grounds for a bomb to go off 
because you as a spouse, you will go on and you have forgiven him and you all are back to the way you were and stuff. And then your mama looking at him like, what you did, my daughter, you know, and your sister is like, I hate him. Why did you marry him? And you up there like, what's wrong with Willie? I love him, well, because, you know? Because the, because the deal was you made such a big deal about it in the first place that it really wasn't a big, that it between you, that. it wasn't that big a deal, but you expressed it because we always express to our friends and family um, the thing much bigger and more dramatic than it actually is. Uh, because Why? Because we're looking for people to be on our side. Mm-hmm. So we always give them our point of view. So your boys they never hear the other part of it. So <laughs> they never hear the part where you actually screwed up. Um, mm-hmm. So your boys that you drink with, play basketball with, they never hear that. They never hear that you were a jerk, which is why she was a bitch to you because you were a jerk, right? They, you, they, they never hear that part. So they always not. So now, because you're only looking for people to be on your side. Mm-hmm. And so you go to your family, you go to your mom, you go to your, I mean, you go to your, your sister and, 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 and you, and you cry to them, but they never see the part where you were ugly. You said, I mean, they, they, they never, they never hear that part. And it wasn't, and, but you know, between the two of you, it wasn't, it wasn't ever really that big a deal to start with, but, but you, you were just angry at that point. You didn't, but you didn't express it to them that way. You didn't say, eh, it's not a big deal though. You know, that never came out of your mouth. So they think it's a, you know what, a huge bombshell, and they feel like they have to get involved. And then after you solve it, like Debbie said, after you solve it and, and you've gone on with life, um, now, that, is that Kenneth? Kenneth, hello. What's up? Um, after, you've gone on with, after you've gone on with life, they're holding on to it because they want to be – Protect, they want to protect you. They want to be on Team Debbie or they want to be on Team Willie because that's the relationship you have. So you have to be really careful. The best thing is to leave them out. And unfortunately, when that happens, you know, and you, you're you back to, to being okay with them and they bring it up, then it brings it back up in your mind. You know, like, well, maybe I was. Maybe I shouldn't have forgiven him. Maybe this and maybe that. And then, you know, a lot of marriages break up because the girl, your, your girlfriend and your sister and your mom mm-hmm. all up in your business when they should have never been in there. Because that relationship, your marriage is between you and your husband. The things that come up and the things that go on, don't ever talk talk too detailed to your family and friends about that stuff. Because that's a personal relationship between you and your husband. And and they don't understand your vibe, you know. Now, I'm not talking about if he's abusing you or anything like that. Of course, you need to talk and get get away from that. But in your normal family problems just the crap that just the crap that happens in life and i, and I think what you I, I think what deb is, is saying is that, that the, the, the problem is and I, I was thinking i was thinking while you were talking is Hello, bon. the deal is that if you have to go run to your mama and your sister and your girlfriend every time you may you may not be mature enough to be in a relationship to be in that level of relationship if you're looking for people to be on your side if you think that there's a side to be on um then you may not be mature enough to do this. This may be too much for you. And then you have to reassess something. Um, yeah, you don't, you don't want that. And, and, and I was going to say something ugly. Oh, that, oh I know I was going to say. Um, about, I don't know, I was going to give some percentage, but at least half the time, the people who are, are advising you on what you should take and giving you neck about... Um, Your uh, man is wrong. They are manless. <laughs> They are, most of those women are manless, and you know I'm telling you know I am telling the truth. They are manless, or they've got seventy five men they go through every week, and have been manless. Um, so it's like Oprah, and men the same way. It's like Oprah giving you you know giving you relationship Don't advice. Let's jump on women now. There are men that are out there that are your best buds. But they cannot stay in a stable relationship and should not be giving you advice. Well, yeah, so don't listen to them either. <laughs> don't listen to them. Just don't. Just, just and don't. And we'll be happy to see you They've been divorced. getting a divorce. They've been divorced four times and don't think it's them. I just keep finding these crazy women. <laughs> yeah, maybe because you're crazy. 
maybe you were born, but you are insane. So yeah, so so be careful about you know. So be really, really be careful about letting other people know, letting other people into the you know the interior of your, um, especially your marriage relationship. I think that that even before you get to marriage, you would people would do a lot better, even in your um, girlfriend boyfriend relationships. Um, and like Debbie said, outside of abuse, um, and I'm going to do a, a YouTube piece on, on, on abuse came from one of those households. I know a lot about it. Um, yeah, I just know a lot about it. But so, so the deal is, um, outside of abuse, if you can keep as many as your girlfriends and boyfriends out, Alita, is that Alita Roan out there? Yes. My goodness, witch. You know, this, this bright studio lights in my eyes, I can't see. <laughs> Wait till I show you with the bright studio lights. Um, but um, if you can keep as many people outside out of your relationship as possible, the the more chance your relationship is going to last and thrive and be more authentic because you're going to keep it's just going to be between you two, mm-hmm. and then you'll know if it's going to work. As many of the outside influences that you can kick away and keep away, the better off you the better off you're going to be. Um, short, in the short term and the long term, really, I think. Mm-hmm. I think so. And one point, you know, if you are having really serious, now, if you're going through really serious issues, say um, a spouse cheated or something like that, and you do need outside help, you should be going to some professional, a counselor or somebody who's not going to be on your side or his side or your pastor, you know, uh, the, the pastor's wife, women, if you need somebody to, to that is going to keep it confidential and not going to be jumping on your side or his side, because they they are with you. They see both uh, sides of everything. So hi, Tamara. And uh, and so you need to, to have somebody professional helping you with counsel. Don't take it to your, your best friend and, and think they are going to be biased and and can help you solve the issues. Yeah, if it's if if it's something like that, you really need to. Uh, my first thought is to, if you can, if you have, if you have a pastor, if you have a uh, somebody, um, if you have a priest or whomever, um, go to them and and share and share with them what's going on. So, because some sort of Christian counseling would be very very good. Um, and can uh, and often and, and and a lot of times, if you approach it correctly, those relationships aren't necessarily over necessarily. They're not. Mm-hmm. A lot of people. A lot of people come back from that. Yes. Um, they they do, but it takes it takes incredibly mature people. Um, it takes people who are incredibly forgiving and people who They're are willing to change and people who who are okay, who are looking to be repentant, who are really sorry and repent. So it takes a it, it takes a high level of maturity. But people have come back from that um, and go on and, and go on and thrive. Uh, but what you can't do is is, is decide that you're going to get um, all your friends as your main advice because that almost never works. People always end up uh, what you can almost guarantee, guarantee if you I mean if you're out there talking to your friends on the basketball court about this that you will be amongst the divorced. Um, and the idea is that uh, what you know a lot of people will, will tell you, and it's true that the divorce can be worse than a death in the family. Um, so, and those people that have gone through so it, it's, not, it's, it's not, hard to come back. It's not what you want. It's not what you want. So if you can avoid divorce, do, do that. Do. Um, I know it's easy. Well, it's not easy getting a divorce, especially if you have been together for a while and you have a lot of assets and things together. But it... it you know, it's not shunned upon like it used to be. And people, you know, well, if we get married, if it don't work, we'll just get divorced. You can't think if, of it that way. If you start like that, you are, I, I'm, tell, I'm telling you, I'll, I'll, you know, what? And, and people can, y'all can think whatever y'all want, but if you start that way with a trap door in your, in your marriage, it's, you, you're already, you're already divorced. Mm-hmm. If you start with a trap door saying that I can bail out of this or an ejection seat, that I can bail out of this any time I want. If it doesn't go like I want, then you you aren't mature enough to be in a relationship to start with. Um, and that's why we we say all the time that marriage is not for wimps. 
It's somebody, it's, it, it, it's, it's a covenant that you decided that you're going to be in until you die. Yes. Whatever your forever is, is till you die. Um, and that you're going to be in that relationship, not a relationship, but that one, with that person, until you die. Um, so, Not five or six different marriages. No, no. 30 <laughs> years doesn't count if it's like five or six people. See, you can't add <laughs> them up. 30 years. You can't add them all up. That doesn't work. That, that, <laughs> that, you know, yeah, I know the math works, but the, the, the reality of that doesn't work. So, um, so if, if, if you are in trouble, and it's I'm like Debbie say was saying it's serious. Then seek then yes seek help for sure, seek help for sure. But uh, make sure that that help isn't coming from somebody first. Like guys who've been divorced three times, that person is not good help. You don't go to him and go, hey man, I'm having trouble with my wife. I know you've been divorced three times. Does that, does that make any sense? Like going to the broke person for, for, for financial advice. Financial advice. <laughs> this guy's gonna work. This guy has sixteen bankruptcies. And is living in, 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 in a cardboard box down by the river, and you're going to ask him about should I get to this Bitcoin thing? <laughs> this is not the dude you ask, right? So of right. course you don't ask somebody who, first of all, who's never been in a relationship of of, of, of any length um, about about relationship advice. You just don't. And uh, when anger gets to the point where you feel that you can't live in the same household together. When it gets to a point where, you know, you don't want to even see that person. Um, that's a bit, that's counseling time. That's time to get some help. And quite frankly, uh, unfortunately, I believe that if you're working on your marriage and you separate, you can't really work on something if you're not around that person or with that person to, to do it. How are you working on it when you don't even see them? And a lot of, and a lot of people, a lot of secular counselors, uh, it's one of the first things that they, um, that one of the first strategies that they employ is that maybe you need a timeout. <laughs> that maybe you, you need to spend some time away. Then go sleep in the, the spare bedroom. Or not. That's my opinion. But, <laughs> or but, not. But, or wake up in the morning right in their face. I mean, this whole you got to deal with these issues. It, you know, but, but David makes a great point. The idea of, 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 of separating, and I know a lot of people do it, but the, but the idea of separating from the problem is, or the situation is fairly immature. Again, what do we keep saying? That, that that these problems are real world, real life problems, between, you know, between grown people and require a huge amount of maturity. So timeouts are for little kids. Yes. Grown ups don't get timeouts. Grown ups have to deal with their problems head on, face to face. It's a partnership. You're committed. When you get into a business with somebody, and you are running this business together and you have a disagreement about something that's going on within the business, do you stop coming to work? You don't get a time out. Hey, listen, I'm going to keep my money to myself for about six months. And then, then the business is going to fail. So you got to learn to work through it and learn to, to talk to each other about it. You learn to deal with it and, and suffer through those rough times. And there'll be rough times. And, and there will be rough times. And there'll be times. Just know. like John Gray and his wife said, there are times that we, we well, I don't like you, <laughs> you know? And I think, I, I, and I, but I love you. And I think, that, I think that's the difference. <laughs> I, think, I, I think that's one of the things that, that, that may be a, a, a topic of discussion. Um, because sometimes, I know it's hard to. I know as you're watching me here on on, on Facebook, you, so you think that I'm I'm adorable and wonderful and funny, and but what I understand, I'm not likable all the time because I'm a human. I've got this human thing. I'm not likable mm -hmm. all the time, and no one's likable all the time. And it's and it's like your kids. You love your kids, but there are times you don't like them. Very, you don't like yeah. them very much. Uh, why? Because they're humans. Because they're little humans. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we get. You love you you love your mom and daddy, but there were times when you were a teenager you didn't like them very much. So, why would you think that your relationship with your spouse would be any different? Yes, there are times where you are not likable. You are not likable. 
you are lovable, but you are definitely not likable. Um, so using that as a standard, I think that in, in today's world um, is that that's the standard that everybody's supposed to, you know, supposed to be your best friend all the time. And I, I and, and when I had best friends, I remember liking, liking, them, liking, all, them, all liking the them all the time no. either. Your best friend get on your nerves from time to time, you know. Everybody does. I mean, and, and even and, though I'm the perfect woman and the perfect wife, and I'm the perfect man. <laughs> somebody, somebody wants to describe me as a, a very evolved man. I'm not sure to this day what the hell that means, <laughs> but I took it as a compliment. I'm a very evolved person. Um, there are times when I'm ugly and nasty. I'm not sweet little Debbie. Um, like the snack cakes. So, uh, I like but, the snack cakes. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that, you know, nobody is likable all the time. So take that into consideration, you know? That can't be the standard. That can't be the standard. When there are times where where you're frustrated by, by this or that, um, that can't be the standard that you don't like them. You know, all the time. That can't be it's, 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 because it's it's beyond that. You know, the marriage relationship is beyond like this is not a Facebook post. You know, you know, your life is not a Facebook post. Um, it it it's is not. No, it's not. It's not. I like posting. Well, even even things, even Facebook. But that's not my life. Well, even Facebook has figured that out that it went from thumbs up to all to a, a number of emoticons. Oh, um, you know, uh, 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 emojis, you know, uh, emoticons that were a little bit more descriptive because sometimes things are this, and sometimes things are this, and sometimes things are, and then sometimes things are, you know, and sometimes things things are are, are angry. Yeah, so like so there's a there's a spectrum of of, um, of of emotions that you'll go through in a relationship. Like liking the person at the time cannot be the standard. Um, you have decided by you've decided that you're going to love them through all those situations, even through your anger, even through your frustration. You've made that decision, and once you make that decision and that and, and, and that commitment, I think it's up to you, as a mature person, to live up to it, to follow through to the best of your ability. And and yes, and it's like what we keep saying: there are going to be times where it's not going to be that easy, but that's okay. You can do it. I did it. <laughs> and we're still doing it. And still doing and, it. And the reason this topic came up for me is because this week I was not very happy. <laughs> there were times when I was not very happy. And I had to deal with it. And then when I eventually realized that it was more me, you know, not wanting to do what I had asked him to do, when and I should have just done did it myself and i had to apologize that you know i'm sorry your apologies accepted just like always <laughs> because that's how you do that's how you stay married and that's how you stay li living indoors that's how you do it so uh who else we got we got hey brother-in-law what's up oh look me. look the woman who's carrying our grandbaby yes <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's yeah. the that's the deal. And, and again, any, anybody who's been married for uh, a time knows that you have to love through the frustration. Because you, for me, it's because it's really simple for me because you said you would. Any more, <laughs> any more, we have, and we need to talk about this. God, we're getting topics out of topics, which is cool. <laughs> um, any more, we have a, a society that, that, that has not, not living up to their commitment. So mm -hmm. it's so it, it doesn't seem it's easy to get out it's of easy it. to get out of them and then rationalize why you got out of them. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't happy. Yes, I have. I in in my job tasks, I get to see <laughs> you know people's career paths and stuff, and so many times I'm I'm like, um, it seems like people change jobs so much. I mean, they're here for six. Months. I wasn't happy. They're here for six months. But people were, people were mean. Months, and they were you, mean to me. And when you are trying to to get a vehicles or homes or whatever like that, that doesn't show stability. Well, they, you know what? Those or, people were 
The people were racist. They weren't. They weren't nice. I didn't like them. So my manager had bad breath. Such an instant, instant life. You know, if you don't want, I don't like it. So I'm gonna leave. I don't like it. Get like some it. stability in your life. Get Stay some, somewhere and be responsible. Work it out. And I think that that's something that's really been missing. The, the spirit of the spirit of follow through and the spirit of working it, working it out. Um, I think that that's missing in our society. Um, uh, of the spirit of being able just to push, push through the hard part because there'll be hard parts in life to be able to push through the hard parts. Um, that's what we're missing. And then, so it's not surprising that that ends up missing, missing relationships. Um, what we hope to do in the, in, in these series, this is the, like the ninth in the series, I think. 10th, actually. Tenth? I counted them last night. Wow. <laughs> 10. Oh, sorry. You all can't see all the fingers. Wait. 10. 10. Wait a minute. So I can't see all the fingers. <laughs> With the other hand, there you go. You put ten. up one hand, and I'll put up one hand. Thank you, because there you go. See, I still can't do a ten. ten. So you can't see all the fingers. But um, um, you know, I think that people are 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 missing that. Are are, are and so we, of course it shows up in you know what in people's relationships. Um, that whole idea that you can't push through the hard parts. Um, another topic, um, which it is hurt, it hurts sometimes. Which is you know, and that's I think we a get normal that. process. Yeah. Um. Going through the fire, when you come out, what do you have? You have something that you have something that's refined, something that's better than better than before. So sometimes it's okay um, to go through the fire because what you what you have later at at the end of something that's that's more pure and more refined uh, and and more valuable. Um, so there are people who've been married as long as I have who've been through stuff. We have who've, who've been through stuff. And then those relationships are looked at like, wow, you guys, you guys really did it. Yeah. Yeah. I we went through, you know, there were some days, you know, but because of that, what you're seeing now is what you admire. Mm -hmm. You admire this because of what we've been able to walk through together. That's why you admire it. And if you want to get, and if you want to get there, then um, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. <laughs> that, was, that was a cheesy switch, wasn't it? I weren't, weren't expecting that fail right there. Yeah, we need you to go to the YouTube channel um, and uh, like uh, like and subscribe to the videos. This comment on comment, topics that you would like to see. Do that. Hit, hit the notification bell. That way when we post on the YouTube, you'll know. Um, and, we, and we really do. Simply subscribing anymore isn't enough. Um, because YouTube has changed their thing, which they're able to do because it's their thing. Thank you, and Google. it's free. Thank you, Google, and it's free. So you know, stop whining about it. Um, so if you, if you hit the notification bell, that helps. Uh, we are still looking to get to the 100 subscriber um, plateau. Uh, we can do some things there, and then we'd be off to our 1,000 subscribers because you got to have 1,000 subscribers to get monetized. So let's start off with 100. Let's go first things first. Um, you guys would do that for us. Would be highly appreciative. All right, I think it's time to get out of here and make because we got to make room for somebody else. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness' sake, y'all take care of yourselves. We love you. Peace. Peace.